The return of the Dodge Viper. Something every Dodge fan wants, but in the right situation. And in this video, I want to go over all the clues that point toward this legendary car returning to the scene to put the Chevy C8 in its place. So from interviews to clues that haunted us over the last few months, let's see if the Viper will make a return in this video. So enough of this fluff, let's get to the stuff. Let's go over six reasons why the Dodge Viper will be shown in 2022. So number one, the Viper still has an active trademark. Previously discussed in the trademarks video, Dodge still has the Viper name trademarked for a couple more years. Now, I know people are going to say manufacturer trademark names all the time and don't use them. Well, that is true. But I wonder why they will renew the trademark for the ACR. Hmm. If Dodge isn't going to make a Viper and only makes drag spec challengers, who cares about the ACR name? GM is about to cancel the Camaro and Ford beats the GT name to death. Ford GT, Mustang GT, GT350, GT500, the Mach-E GT, just saying. Number two, a Viper ACR was shown during EV day. Now, this is an Easter egg. So if you look at the lineup of vehicles, current models are facing towards the left, previous vehicles are facing towards the right. Now, you could make an argument that SRT vehicles are what's facing towards the left, but I want to know where the Neon SRT4, Challenger SRT 392, Caliber SRT 4, the Magnum SRT 8, heck, even the Dodge Ram SRT 10. There is no reason for the car to be facing that way in the lineup and conveniently lurking clearly in the frame for pretty much every shot at the Dodge Brother house. Dodge converted the Viper's assembly plant into a museum and they have several Vipers on display. Why they chose that specific Viper when they could use the first gen Viper is one thing. Turning it in the wrong direction is a nice suitable Easter egg. Well played, Tim. Just saying. Number three, Stellantis won't deny Viper is in development. The new Stellantis CEO, Carlos Tavares, was asked a few months ago about the Viper, Challenger, and Charger. He confirms that both the Challenger and Charger will return because during EV day, people went into a frenzy thinking the Challenger is gone. To dispel any speculation, he confirmed both current car names were returning. But he wouldn't say anything about the Viper. He wouldn't confirm nor deny the existence of the Viper. Sergio had no problem saying the Viper wasn't in their five-year plan. Tim Kaniskis had no problem saying a Challenger ACR wasn't coming in 2020. No problem saying a Charger Demon wasn't happening either. I heard silence is golden. That reminds me, I never heard Dodge say the Elephant wouldn't make it into production cars since it debuted in 2018. Just saying. Number four, Ralph Giles drops details about the Viper. So let's hear what Ralph has to say. Whether there'll be another Viper, I think in my lifetime, I surely hope so. I know for sure it'll be a different technology, for sure. W whatever the next, if, Ooh, we, if we do, hmm. if we do another <laughs> Viper, it's going to have to celebrate a technical uh, step function, a new thing in technology. As covered in this video, Ralph says the Viper would come back totally different from what we're used to. And a case can be made that Dodge could use the Maserati MC20 as a base for a new Viper. Using the MC20 would introduce a carbon fiber tub, a mid-engine format, some butterfly doors, and they'll have a hybrid in development. If Dodge takes the Ferrari SF90 as inspiration, it pairs a 769 horsepower engine with a 217 horsepower electric motor for 986 horsepower total output. And that car also does 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds. The MC20's 621 horsepower engine does 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. The Viper ACR last did it at 3.3 seconds. The SF90's hybrid system is in a mid-engine format with three electric motors, two at the front wheels and one in the transmission. If the inline six goes in the new Viper, now, as far as the GME T6 engine is concerned, if I use the BMW's 500 horsepower inline six engine as an example, add the 178 horsepower from the 4 by 8 two electric motors, we could probably see a 2024 TRX with at least 675 horsepower in a hybrid setup. Now, to give a comparison, a 695 horsepower Porsche Panamera hybrid can do zero to 60 in three seconds. A full EV Viper based on the model Stellantis said would be available can have up to 1,326 horsepower. A 1,000 horsepower Tesla Model S Plaid can do a 0 to 60 in 2 seconds. Sounds to me like a very fast Viper is in development. Just saying. Number 5. 
platform sharing. Stellantis will share as many parts as possible between brands to cut down costs. And as I detailed above, the MC20 doesn't have a sibling and could be the perfect car to cut down on development. And such, the MC20 was developed mostly on a simulator and this could explain why you don't see a Viper running around yet. Another reason why MC20 is the perfect car is because the Viper doesn't have a home. The Connor plant that used to make the Viper was again turned into a museum, right? So where will the Viper be produced? Maserati could make the Viper and then Dodge can import it to America. Dodge already imports the Challenger and the Charger both from Canada and is about to import the Hornet from Alfa Romeo. The same company that we've heard for years would be the next gen Challenger and Charger cars are based off of. Only vehicle Dodge currently makes that is based in the US is the Durango. So Dodge getting Maserati to make the Viper for them sounds like business as usual. <laughs> Just saying. Number 6. A significant vehicle is in the works. Dodge talked to Motor Trends a few weeks ago and said that a significant new vehicle was coming in 2022. And the Viper is a very significant car that would help Dodge against the C8 Corvette that is killing sales. Rumors are out that Ford may make a mid-engine Thunderbird and Dodge needs to have an answer. Dodge's Never Live program has a ghost on the garage door. This door makes the perfect sense of a car returning from the dead, such as the Viper. A canceled nameplate that everyone wants back. And with the other 5 points covered in this video, the time for the 6th gen Dodge Viper might be now. And that's it for this video, 6 reasons that support the Viper coming back. Let us know down in the comments what you think. Will the Viper be the significant vehicle Dodge confirmed coming next year? What about the Viper going with the GM ET6 engine? Or would missing the V10 be a deal breaker? If you found this video helpful, leave this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on the latest news. Until the next video, I'm out!